Um, the lipstick. The lipstick, the babes. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So this is a very, 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 very important video. This is a very, very, very important video. It's one of the motivate and empower videos that I am starting off for the year. Um, kind of last year was a little bit crazy for me because um, I didn't push the series as much as I wanted to, but it is really because that there, there was just a lot going on. Okay. There was a lot going on and, um, you know, when you don't feel inspired to empower on or motivate somebody, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that, oh, I'm motivated with A, B, C. No, no. But I felt like it is very, very important to get this video out, um, especially now in the first week of January 2020, 2020, 20 planning, 20 planning. Uh, I wanted to get this video out because um, I feel that there are fundamental things that I learned throughout 2019. 2019 was by far the worst year for me, the worst year for me. Uh, but as much as it was the worst year, it was a year of growth and it was a year of discovering things about myself, about the people around me, uh, just, just things that I really didn't pay too much attention to. And I felt like I need to get this kind of video out because, um, it's taught me a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot. We are gonna talk today about what I learned in 2019. Let's get into it. <laughs> there is a power and a strength in saying no. Uh, 2019 for me was one of the years where I said no to a lot of things. I said no to people uh, overstepping the boundaries when it came to me. I said no if I didn't like something and I did not want to be a part of it, I said no. And there is something very liberating and strengthening and powerful about saying no and knowing that you don't always have to try and project this sort of image of being nice and um, you know, you don't have to feel afraid to to say no just because you don't want someone to perceive you a certain way so no for me in 2019 was powerful people need to learn how to not overstep boundaries you need to set a wall of boundaries so that people know that how they could no so that people know how they should approach you uh when uh at which you know degree in which they can approach you with certain things and um yeah so no for me was very very powerful and it gave me a strength that i didn't think i had so very very important that's my number one learning how to say no and taking your power back number two is health and fitness being a personal journey now for me i am very big on health but listen we just came out of december okay i was not about the health journey in december i was eating i was having great drinks and things like that but health is a very important part of my life and so is fitness um as you guys may have seen but what i did notice is that the world is divided into two when it comes to health and fitness. There are people who are very big on fitness, taking care of yourself, losing the weight, looking, you know, good and blah, blah, blah. And then there are people who are on the spectrum of body positivity, health at every size. And man, I cannot tell you how many times I read those kinds of articles, uh, readings and things like that and watched those kind of videos on, um, YouTube. But the point of it all, what I realized is that even though I snap and I put down, you know, I show you guys what I'm eating and I show you guys uh, what I'm doing at the gym, health and fitness is a very personal journey to each person who chooses to partake in it. So I also learned that it doesn't matter what someone is doing or not doing with regards to health and fitness. It's not your story to tell them what they should do when it comes to their health and their fitness. Health and fitness is very personal. You cannot be judging somebody on the fact that, oh, so today you see me eating a burger and wow, Katla was just fallen off the health wagon and whatever. No, but at the same time, it is me learning more about myself, about my body, what I wanted to look like, and that kind of stuff that has made me seen that health and fitness is very personal to each and every single individual. And you cannot expect that, you know, 
you can have a say in someone's life when it comes to health and fitness. Very, very important thing that I learned in 2019. And the next thing is probably one of, uh, yeah, it's really high up there. There is a power in clicking the unfollow button or blocking or deleting or muting. There is so much power and liberation in that you have the power to control what you see and what you bring to your phone to your laptop to wherever whatever connects you with the outside world social media wise or media wise even for that matter you have the power to control what you see if it is negative and it affects you negatively if you are following uh, fitness accounts on Instagram and these people are really in there and it makes you feel some type of way about yourself don't follow them don't follow them. If you are following somebody you know that doesn't like you or has said some things about you, why are you following them? If you don't want to unfollow them, fine, because you wanna, you still want to show them support, but you really don't want to see their content or whatever, mute them. Don't, don't see them because if that person stirs up some sort of emotion within you that is negative or that brings you down or that puts you in some sort of despair or sorrow or just not being happy, why are you allowing yourself to see that kind of content? And for me, or see anything from that person for that matter. And for me, this was a very fundamental change and move in my uh, life to just get rid of what I do not want to see or do not speak to the people that I feel like take advantage of me or just disrespect me or whatever. I had to physically make the move to block and delete and my life has been better ever since. So that is a good thing that I learned that you have the power to control what you see and how it impacts impacts you. Very important. The next thing is that confidence is a powerful self boost. Honey, I'm going to give you an example, a simple example. For me, this year was the first year where I started wearing swimsuits like nice ones and bikinis and this and that and the other. I was so confident that that confidence, that, that, just me telling myself that I'm gonna wear it. I don't care who says what, I'm gonna wear it. But just that confidence that I radiated or received from just feeling so beautiful and sexy and what have you skyrocketed my self-esteem i became more confident in the workplace i spoke up i spoke louder as an introvert there's certain places in my life where i feel like my voice is smaller as opposed to uh you know certain places in my life where i feel like i have a loud mouth and with friends and family and things like that but when I started stepping into my confidence and stepping into, you know, being, being, you know, just, just, just African bird, just, just being happy with who I am and feeling confident about it. Wow, man, it boosted me so much and it made me feel so good that I, I couldn't let it go. And then the next one is being present is key. Now, for me, this is very, very important because I'm on YouTube. I'm constantly flipping out my camera. I'm talking to my camera right now, but I'm also vlogging and I'm out and about and I'm doing this and doing that. That for a moment, I actually forgot that sometimes it is more important to be present and to be in the moment and enjoy the memories. Um, I really know that I started doing that around the time that I had the picnic here at my place with my friends. I chose actively not not to vlog that because I felt like I wanted to be in the memory. As much as I wanted to share the process of it with you and take some pictures on the day, but I felt like sometimes it is so important to immerse yourself in what you are doing and who you are with. And you know, you don't lose those important nuggets of gold, the conversations that you have with people that better your life as well, that I realized that being present is very, very, very important. Also just to even give you that boost, that rejuvenation, that uh, connection with the people that are around you, I really felt like it is so, so important to not forget, um, you know, to just not forget who I am, what I'm about, and spending the time with the people that I value the most without having to switch on my camera. Being present is absolutely key. Mm -hmm. This one, this one hit me by surprise, but is very, very true as well. Not every plan 
will thrive okay i plan things a lot and i plan so much for 2019 things that didn't end up making it didn't end up coming to the forefront of my life and you know there's a saying about how every time you plan god laughs he does because he's just like um no i will decide what you do and how you do it and when you do it and how it should come to you and i learned that a lot in 2019 and i felt like wow i i had little fights and disagreements with god like but i'm trying to push this and he was just like chill sis now is not the time and i feel like 20 plenty might be that time and um not every plan will thrive but it does not it does not say stop planning it does not say stop trying to progress your life and develop yourself as a human being it just means that not everything will come at the time that you expect it to and that is okay the next point is in terms of spirituality and faith god is always there waiting so for me my spirituality was tested quite a lot this year and uh, in 2019 and i was just i was not okay man faith wise i wasn't going to church as often as i normally do i was just upset with god a lot of the time we were we were going through it me and him and he was just like i'm here you gonna come back I'm waiting and I did I did I started reading my motivational books I started you know slowly but towards the end of 2019 and I realized how how fulfilled it made me feel I realized how present it made me feel with my relationship with God but the most important thing was that he was always there he was always waiting he was always just saying you need your time it's okay but you're gonna come back and i did i did and it is powerful to know that no matter how much you may be going through something when your religion and your faith um is a big part of your life it may not be at that time but when it is a big part of your life you will constantly go back to it you will constantly remember uh why you're a child of god and why he's got so much value and importance in your life and that is what 2019 the latter part of 2019 reminded me of very very important the next thing i learned whoo, this i learned a lot is that authenticity is always more attractive than success or perfection i met so many people in 2019 and some were great and i i got more attached to them because of their authenticity i was drawn to them because of their relatability and there were certain people that i just could not draw myself to you because i felt like you were not relatable to me this applies to everything to my social media to youtube to um life and the people that i met around me during this time it applied literally to everything and i realized that i am more drawn to people who are who, who who have humanized themselves towards me who have shown me that you don't always have to be perfect who have shown me that not it's not going to be you know perfect and perfection all the time but something about them drew me to them because i felt like it's not even about being successful it's not even about being um not successful or whatever but it's about the relationships that you cultivate with people and the honesty and the truth and uh the authenticity that you bring to the relationships that you share with people and i loved it i lived for it so much that i realized that wow and it's one of the things that i get a lot on my channel is that you're relatable you're authentic and whatever and that is by far 110 thousand percent more of something that i would wish to project to people who watch me as opposed to being successful or being unattainable or whatever or being unapproachable no i want to people to realize that i am what i am <laughs> but at the same time i'm authentic and real as well so i learned that quite a lot in 2019 and the last thing is definitely something that i got from michelle obama from reading her book and also uh buying her becoming journal this is the journal that i'm going to be using in 2019 but one of the first pages or first couple of pages um the the one thing that i read and i started using it like okay towards the end of 2019 uh one of the things that i read was 
your story matters. So whatever, whatever your story is, whether your story is uh, business, life, religion, politics, whatever it is, what you have to bring to the world matters. And for me, that was a very important part of my life in 2019 is that I want to create something that I want to be remembered for. I want to serve a purpose to others, to people, to things, to whatever, but anything that I want to be remembered for, what is my purpose? And when I read that line, it just reminded me that, wow, yes, my story matters. So don't give up. Whatever you have to bring to the situation or to the equation, don't stop trying. And what you have to say at the table where everybody's dining and has everything to say and everything to show and everything to do and blah, 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 your story matters too. You are important too. And it's just a matter of time before the whole world gets to see that. And... I loved it. I loved it. And I felt like it's something that you need to also carry into this year. Your story matters too. Okay, so that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the first video of Motivate and Empower, and we're going to get into it. We're going to make Motivate and Empower a um, part of this personal development series. And yeah, I hope you guys are great. I hope you guys are ready for 2020. Thank you guys for being around in 2019 and supporting my channel. It has meant so, so much to me. And let's do it. Let's get it. It's 2020. I'll see you in the next one.